let's talk about careers that how are how is ai going to change the way people do their work what sort of new career paths new career paths enabled by ai and some old career paths that could be morphed into something new by ai what do you see happening you know help me with help me peer into the crystal ball and understand where this goes sure. so um of course when you're talking about people are being cautious about ai and all that it's just outside silicon valley right so within silicon valley they're all crazy about ai which is, which is that's one of the things that gives me a lot of pause because uh, running headlong into this uh so let's talk about this there are a couple of things i want to say this so one thing is almost all jobs right almost all jobs that we do now we're going to have certain aspects of the job that is easily doable by this generation of ai right or gen ai as people call it i meant generation not generative it's whatever this whether the gen ai foundation model or whatever is the current uh, wave of ai we want to name it right these can do certain aspects of their skills very well right perhaps for most jobs it cannot do all of it well right so for an example right so you you might take a, 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 a let's take a journalist right i mean it's like so ai can possibly write an article in 15 different formats right but a journalist would still have to bring in their insight in terms of okay what is the right article to write in this particular context right so looking at what is happening in the outside world i mean imbibing a lot of it doing your fundamental research you can use this ai models to do the research for you it can read a lot more new sources than a human being can effectively do summarize things give you bullet points that you can consume right but then there is still this journalistic intuition that tells me at this point this is the story that i have to write and then the ai is going to help me write it more effectively right so but then that still that that piece right is this kind of an indefinable piece as to what you as an individual bring to that right your uh, your uh, viewpoints your um, i wouldn't say biases it's not the question of you bringing your biases but that could be it right and also bringing a lot of uh, history your interaction with the world and the, your past articles that you have written and so on and so forth your experience that you bring in right that individualistic thing uh is still not available with these ai models i mean you can say that oh write this article as if a journalist with 15 years experience writes it it will give you something right but to say that write this article that i think that i should be writing now is something it's still there is a gap right so uh, it will give you an output obviously but it might not be the the best output like that for almost every every skill that you take out there right uh, there will be some aspects of the skill that can be done better by these ai models and still some aspects of the skill which you still need the human with their uh, several years of training and their skills and their innate ability to do some things are needed so one example is in music right now you have some amazing amazing music producing ai systems i don't know if you have played around with any of them so i have a little bit but not the amazing ones I, oh yeah some not... of them are really good okay there are uh, 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 but then it's not really as captivating the music is pleasing to hear but then if you have a human co create the music with the ai right the human comes in and says hey can you use a different instrument for these 15 seconds than what you have used or can you increase the tempo of the music at this point can you reduce the tempo here can you add a voice here so then it just keeps doing that right but then uh, at the end of it you get a lot more interesting music than you would have gotten if you just let the ai generate things by itself right so this co creation is something that's going to become a a a a, a lot more common way of working both for artists and for you know regular uh people i mean even even an accounting job right so i jokingly say that uh, creative accounting will get a new meaning if you start using generative ai uh, but uh, so then um, you could co create stuff right so you could ask it to generate all kinds of new reports that you never thought of doing and stuff like that right and same thing applies to uh, stuff like programming yeah. right uh, so this is something which uh, andrew ng recently said in an interview right he said that uh, a lot of people say that you should stop learning programming because ai will do all the coding for you andrew said uh, uh, he gave this example of uh, one of the courses that he was teaching right he wanted to create a cover page 
for the course. So he used one of these Gen AI tools uh, that uh, generates images and asked it to generate some image for the cover uh, page, and it did. He was not very happy with it. So he engaged a professional artist who used the same tool that he used for creating the image. He just made, still made calls to the AI, but he produced something that was far more fascinating and engaging than what, what Andrew could produce just by him blindly interacting with an AI. So he said, just like a trained artist can get a lot more out of the AI, a trained programmer is going to write better code using AI. Very interesting analogy, because I, th I think um, the idea of a tool, of AI ultimately being a tool in someone's hand, right? And it's the, the person wielding the tool that is the producer of the output, right? The Can I finish what Andrew said, because it's very relevant for our discussion, right? So uh, he said, therefore, he claims that more people should learn programming now, and not less, because programming has become easier. So you don't have to worry about syntax. You don't have to worry about debugging. Like you don't have to worry about packaging. You don't have to worry about all these other software engineering stuff that was happening. You have to worry about design. You really have to think about, okay, what is it that this program should do, right? What is the actual problem it should be solving? What data it should be operating on? How should it present the output to the person? You can go back and say, no, 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 please don't do the UI displays, do it another way and things like that. But then somebody needs, you need to be trained in what is good code design, right? So what is modular design, right? So what works well with what, right? And those kinds of issues with regard to broader software engineering concepts rather than learning more about syntax. Right, what is the most efficient way? Can I write this code in four lines versus three lines? Don't worry about it. You can ask the AI to optimize, keep optimizing the code so that you get a three-line code instead of a 15-line code. But you need to understand what is good code design so that you can actually direct the AI in a proper way. And that is becoming easier. So some people who understand domain well can also be taught how to write code well for that domain. Right? So more people should be learning programming, not less.